And always remember, to do a project like this, as complicated as it is, you have to have the passion to do it. And you have to have the... <laughs> Patience. <laughs> you have to have patience. You have to have... <laughs> I do this every time. Hey, it's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop. Merry Christmas. We got one more installment this week on the uh, Healy Shroud Repair. And as you see, what we've got here, uh, try to do a practical method of pulling this thing. But first, you have to understand what we're trying to do here. We address the, the problems uh, right here, where it was all knotted up and folded and everything. And we've got most of that out. This is all just a light planish now. But we have a global problem. This thing is twisted. Because it got hit really hard right here, if we take trammel points and we measure on the hood opening from corner to corner, from here to here, we've got that measurement from the center of the radius to the center of the radius. We, me we measure it this way and we're, we're about a half an inch away. So this has to go this way. As it goes this way, this distance will get shorter, this distance will get longer. So essentially we have to move this about a quarter of an inch that way. That's our worst problem right now. And we've got um, a little bit of pressure on this right now. And I think what would be best if we put a little heat over here because we've got this buckle. And if we heat this up a little bit, that'll... Uh, cause that to move a little bit easier. So let's try doing that. Now, some of the comments have been, Ray, why didn't you just cut that bad piece off, copy the other side, and weld on a new piece? Well, we could have done that. But the point of this video is to show you that you can save this stuff. And um, that information on that side is relatively okay. We can probably cut that off and that would be another video that's another way to solve the problem but this is a, a, a virgin shroud basically it hasn't been all ground heavily by some uh, bad bodywork guy who grinds dense smooth so that the metal is all thin the metal is all the originally just like it came out of the factory and there's not about you know 25 pull rod holes it would have to be filled up here. So this would planish out pretty easily, I believe. The biggest problem we have right now is this pull that we have to do. We've got to pull this a quarter of an inch. Now I do have a frame machine. I could throw it on a frame machine and you can have lasers and all fancy doohickeys and everything that nobody else has except for a professional shop. So what do we do? We've got a bunch of uh, two by sixes and eights and and a 4x4 four four beam here and we've got a ratchet strap and some heat and we'll see if we can do it this way. I don't know if it'll work but we'll give it a shot. Alright, we're going to give this a little heat here now. Ow! <laughs> I caught the lacquer on fire on my thumb. <laughs> And we'll put a little pressure on it. That corner is nose diving down, so I want to hold that up at the same time.
All right, so now we do the measurement. We got pressure on it right now. We're about three eighths away. And we're about three eighths away. So that just about evened it up, but there's going to be some spring back. So it's, it's rippling it up a little bit right here too. So it's doing a little bit of damage there. Let's see if we need to maybe throw some more heat on that and we'll give it a couple more clicks. See what happened. Just using uh, some strength of the bench, some clamps, and this 4x4, four four, and we got it all locked. It wouldn't work the way it was, so you have to try something. Now, a lot of people uh, commented about this. Uh, they're asking if I'm annealing this. No, I'm not annealing it. I'm basically just exciting it and warming it up a little bit. That's the paint burning off there. That's not enough heat to anneal it. I said about three or four hundred degrees. Let's see if we can take a couple more clicks on this thing. There's two more clicks. We'll let that stay under tension with the, the heat. Let it cool down a little bit. A little bit of a buckle going inboard here. We'll have to get it from the other side. But most of that buckle came out. And we'll measure it again under tension and see what that says. We got that much to the corner. About three eighths. So that weighs a little longer. So I release it now. Hopefully, it doesn't go right back like a spring. Hopefully, it stays there. So let's see what we got for temperature over here. Cooling down. It's probably only 100 degrees or so now. Let's take that tension off. Tension's off. Measure again. This corner, I got about three eighths of an inch. This corner, or that corner, it's pretty close. Pretty close. I'd say it still needs a little bit more. I'm going to try to uh, pop this corner up a little bit.
just a little fine adjuster here. You don't have trammel points, it's one of the best tools ever. It's sim similar to a divider, but it goes over obstacles, measures long distance, depends on how long your trammel is. Well, it's still off a little bit, about uh, probably about an eighth of an inch more it needs to come this way. Question is, Maybe we'll flip that over, get that kink out of here, get that little kink there, and do an assessment of what we got here. All right, we flipped her upside down, and um, Mark had made this gauge. I'll show you again where this gauge goes. This is a side here that's uh, pretty original, unmolested, and that gauge was made off of that. And if you remember from, I think, part one or part two, maybe part two, we had like an inch and a half a gap under here. So now we put that right in that corner there, right on the hill. And now we're fitting in there pretty good. And we've only got, actually it's seesawing right here. And this flange is broken. So there's a little bit high right here. It's got a buckle coming in here. So that's actually fitting pretty good. You can see the front curve is fitting good, but it, it, it's seesawing right at this point here. There's a high point right here that we'll have to address. So I think that's globally where we need it to be. This kink we gotta pull out here. We'll have to strip this. Uh, Mark stripped all the other stuff away. We'll have to strip this out. That's looking pretty good. So we did find that the, um, the grill shell is the wrong grill shell or the grill surround that we had because it was much narrower. And um, I put it up on my Facebook page and somebody correctly identified it as a, it's a Austin Healey 3000, but the early one is a BJ7, and this is a BJ8. The Mark, the Mark II had the earliest smaller one. This is a Mark III. So this has a bigger surround. So we won't be able to use that other surround. So if, We've got to get this kink out of here. And we'll have to weld this up before we, because uh, that's just jumping all over the place when you put uh, any load on. Now most of what we did was we reset the arrangement value, the way this was all bent. Um, the area value, how much shrink and stretch, and uh, that area value uh, was altered a very tiny amount. It's all the arrangement that happened with the, the um, accident damage. So we've got this pretty good. That'll all planish out nice. This will planish out nice. We do have to do another pull on it. We've got the setup. Unfortunately, it's uh, Thursday night at about 10.30. Mark has to go again. And uh, we, it took us about an hour and a half to make this setup all happen. So it kind of ate up our uh, video time. So we're gonna have to cut this one short. I wanna thank everybody that uh, has uh, so far entered the the contest for the apprenticeship. Uh, there's a bunch of people and we expect a whole bunch more and uh, we've got some really great en entrees, in it, en entrees in it and also I put out the word for a group project that everybody in the audience if they wanted to could participate in 
and we've had a bunch of ideas for that. The one that really struck me the most so far was somebody suggested making a weather vane, and a copper weather vane would be a really cool project. Now we just got to come up with a design. So in the next installment, which will be after Christmas, uh, I want to thank, thank everybody for watching and Merry Christmas. Uh, the next installment will be, we'll pull this a little bit more and then we'll start doing this refinement of these surfaces, planishing them all out. But that'll probably be uh, next Tuesday or next Wednesday before we get the, uh, the next installment uh, on YouTube. So thanks for watching. It's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop. Please keep subscribing. Tell your friends. Give us the comments. Give us the likes. Hit the notification button. Send in some entries into the apprenticeship program. Some more ideas about uh, a, pro a, a project that everybody in the audience can do. And remember that metal is clay. I right, remember to do a project like this, you have to have passion. You have to have patience. And you have to have precision, precision measurements. And you have to have persistence. And a little bit of prayer goes a long way. Thanks for watching. Merry Christmas.